It's gonna be raining today? Today. Yeah. No. Yep. The worst day to be raining. Rain early, then remaining cloudy with showers in the afternoon. High 54. In this video, I'm gonna give you a glimpse of the 10 steps of what it takes to take a pig from alive to then in our bellies. Mr. Brown, you ready for this, buddy? Okay, you look very excited. What do you have there in your hand? Butter knife. Okay, a butter knife. Is that gonna be your butcher knife today? Uh, okay, you excited? Okay. He's very excited. He had the outfit laid out the night before. Hey, you excited, Lily? Mm-hmm. Stay. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Boys, you're excited. Actually, I think we're all excited this morning. Woke up at 3.30. Grandma and Big Daddy woke up at 5.30. Jonah woke up at 5.45. Yeah. <laughs> Step number one, you get ready. And it looks like, look, over there at the barn, looks like some other people have been woke up. Hey, Mike. Yes. Good morning. Good morning, how are you? You got a problem if I start the fire? Yeah, we're starting, uh, we're just about I to have take... dry kindling right here. Paper. Oh, good. Uh, we're, we're chopping some kindling, but that might be better. I have dry kindling, Ben. It's all right, I just made kindling. It's pretty well, dry. I bring matches, he brings a blowtorch. Okay, Ben. You ready? Yeah. Uh, 55 degree water to heat up, Mike. We're gonna reduce it to about 65 gallons to make it easier so we don't splash right. out the fire. Oh, that's right, this is too much water. But I need water down there because we're gonna heat water for dishwater. Last morning, y'all will never know it. These guys are alone in their pen right now. The chickens are there, haven't been let out. I don't want the chickens in here when we harvest these guys. Um, so, my idea, Jonah, is to Get the chickens out. We'll let the chickens free range today and we'll be able to get in there and harvest these pigs in peace. They're hungry. So to get that chick shawl out without getting the pigs out, we'll get the chick shawl over here. We'll, we'll walk over there with the feed, even though we're not gonna feed it to them. They're hungry, but we don't wanna feed them because we don't want their, them digesting. We don't want manure in their intestinal tracts when we butcher them. We just want it to be safe and clean as possible. Okay. They're not excited because we are, we are going to kill them. They're not excited? Do you think they know? Yeah. yeah. I hope they don't know. Papa, right, come on. Papa, can, I cut up, can I have a bunch of those pigs? Those <coughs> two pigs? Can you have them? Yeah, two bunch of them. Yeah, buddy, that's breakfast, lunch, and dinner, buddy. Watch out, Jenna. Okay, go ahead. Drop it, Mr. Brown. Free the birds. Yay! Total crazy free range. I think it'll be just fine for one day. Papa, can I put two of these chickens? Later this year. What's that, what did I? Yep. Goody. The second thing you do is kill and bleed out. Unfortunately, I can't show you this on the YouTube platform. It's against the policy, but I want you guys to be able to see it if you want to do your own on-farm kill. I think that's the most important because it doesn't stress the animal out. And when the animal gets stressed out, it releases the amino acid into the meat and then it affects the quality of it. So it's better to do an on-farm kill for you and the sake of the animal. I want you to learn how to do it if you want to. I've, I've put up, that's part one of our Art of Pig Butchery Master Class, and I'm making that part available to you guys completely free. You just sign up for your email, and then I email you that video. It's like 22 minutes long. We don't just show you how to actually shoot and then slit the throat. We show you that, but then we also talk about more about why you would want to do that, how to stay safe, and other kinds of best practices. So check that out, the link's in the description. Here, hand me, there hand me them. Okay. Most of them are in. Mike? Oh, that's a horse. Okay. Another thing I talk about in that video, many of you are asking about this. Is it 
all right to kill the pigs in front of the other pigs? That's a burning question for many of you. We answer it in that video. I think it'll make complete sense for you. Go check that out. Safety. Thanks. Now, the next step is how do you get the pigs from where they were to where you need them to be? Well, in our case, we just dragged them down the hill. Their life was gone. That was fine. We were, gonna, we're going to skin them. They're going to get cleaned. It's okay. Scalding wise, we did program. We talked about where we're going to do things. The pigs are already up there uh, for the last few days. It wasn't fully accidental that we started up on a hill. You are going to do it wherever you have to do it. If you have a tractor and a bucket, now you have a lot more opportunity to easily move it. But if you're talking manual, it's not that hard to haul them, but you need a couple people. Lawn tractor with the tow line's fine, but uh, we want to be respectful of the animal to some degree, but we also don't want to bruise and damage it on, uh, by aggressively rolling it down a gravel road. Uh, we've, we've really hurt ourselves. And then we take the pig and scald them. I'm fortunate enough to be able to afford a, a hundred gallon stainless steel tank to scald them in. So we've rinsed down the hog a little bit just to get some of the blood off. That's more for us than anybody else. Uh, we have a scalding tank here. Lots of ways to do that. You can do a 55 gallon drum that's, that's semi-clean um, and you can build a fire, some form of a mount. Challenge with the 55 gallon drum is you can't dip. It's not big enough. You're going to knock it over even with a tractor. So this is a hundred gallon. Um, the other thing you can get is something that would be equivalent to an oil tank, your, your oblong, large, almost 100 gallon tank. And you can cut that sideways, like the barbecue tank sideways, and you can create a bath. We have a friend that welded a sled onto the bottom and built a fire underneath. Sydney's actually doing some videos from our group, uh, are posting um, on part-time permies if you want to see that sled operation. Uh, and the, the other ways, if you don't have any of these available, you're still going to need 50, 60, 70 gallons of water, but you can take buckets, it's called pour over, and you're gonna pour it over the animal. And our goal is to somewhat sanitize, but also get the hair follicles to actually open up. If it's not hot enough, they don't release. If it's about 145, they release and will allow us to get the skin out, uh, get the hair off easily. If you go much over 150, it's gonna sear them in there and they're gonna be stuck and all you can do is shave them off. And that's not gonna give you good skin. So uh, our goal is to get water at about 150. And we're going to use the gambrel and we're gonna hook and we're gonna dip. Um, we moderate our water by adding cool water because we ran just a little hot which is better than having to bring it up to temperature and the challenge here is that you have a safe distance if we dump this bucket we got 70 gallons of 150 degree water moving downhill uh, we've also programmed our whole kitchen best we could with our to create areas where things are going to run away from our cooking area you're going to try and just make things as helpful as possible oh easy peasy So you can hang different ways. We, we like, generally you want to hang from the hind because you want to move blood towards the heart and towards the, towards the head and continue to drain whatever rem remains there. We will take the head off uh, after we, we scrape it. You know, you could do it, but it's, it's just going to eliminate contamination and bloody areas. So yeah, it's a personal choice on that. Coming right behind you. Because we got this big tank, we almost have the whole thing in. So we need this. We need to stall these back legs. So we could flip it and dip the back, or we could also just kind of dip this and then we can fit the follow up laying it down there. You're going to use buckets and you're just going to have to pour buckets and buckets in each section until you find that hair starts to release. Uh, so it'll take more water, but it takes less maneuvering. Yep, yep, yep. I think we're good. That, that was pull, that was real. All right, what do you think? Are we going to do pour over or to finish, or you want to flip it? Okay, yeah. That's the easiest part yeah. of the Yeah, let's do it. The yeah, the head, you're right. So we're going to get a live weight. Most important is you're going to be your carcass weight, but we're going to get a live weight so we see our yield. All right. 
275, is that? 315. Oh, I can't read. 315. So this is pour over method. And then there's the scraping. Um, we have these scrapers. You could use a knife. Scrapers are a little bit easier, but we use these scrapers to scrape the hair off. It's kind of like plucking a, the feathers off of a chicken. You get that scald right, it goes good, and it went well for us. That was probably one of the more time consuming parts, though. We're not really raising and, and cutting the. Um, cutting the hair we could but we're really trying to grab it and yank it out of the skin so um, this is a perfect device you can use knives and kind of shave it and if it's yielded it'll scrape out pretty easily we use the smaller bell to get around the uh, face muscles areas that we're going to be very careful around the hocks of the feet we need to clean all the hair we need to clean all the mud and do our very best to get in and around that and you can scrape fairly hard, but if you go too hard with the bells, they will, they will pierce through the skin, uh, which is not ideal. Um, and it's just gonna shed off. Then we eviscerate. We had a tractor to dip it in and out of that tub. Folks can use, they, you could put the barrel underneath a tree and use a pulley system, but we transported with the tractor into the barn and then hung it up with a pulley system, transferred it from the tractor to a pulley system, and hung them up and eviscerate. I guess that would be getting the guts out, splitting the carcass in half. You can draw down, if you've got gonads, you can draw down on either side and you're gonna come around the gonads. Uh, I guess we're gonna probably end up with some, some males. So the skin will peel off easily, and then you're gonna come you know, again, I'm pretending if we got some more gonad activity, could do a straight line. We're gonna come around and we're gonna end up getting around the anal cavity, the anal area, because we wanna isolate dirty ends. Um, and a protective way to, to do a lot of this is if you work with your knife blade away, if you're concerned about penetrating organs, you have a lot of a lot of ability to do that. Holding the tail on isn't a bad deal because it gives you a handle, but the tail can come off at your, at your convenience. Then you're gonna end up coming down, straight line, you're gonna end up in the rib cage at some point. You can take a backwards knife and you can start zipping. There we go. All right, so we're in, we've got intestines, there's so small intestines in there. It's not a requirement, but it's a nice, can be nice. Some people like to zip tie the end so you don't have any spillage before it. Uh, we'll get that after we kind of release this. So we're going to. My hand behind the back of it. All right. Got it. You got the heart and throat. You can cut between the, the sternum uh, if you want uh, and saw it out, or you can also kind of reach and get in there. And then you're gonna get, almost get your hand around, grasp around the throat. You'll find it in there. Yeah, I think it's okay. really. All right. And then there's making the cuts. Going between ribs three and four. Um, uh, is going to be our, our common cut here. And so we just feel in rib one is small. One, two, three. So we got one, two, three. So I'm scraping right inside the rib. And so I'm lucky that I got right, I found. I came right through the spine because we took off some of the spine here. A lot of times you're going to have some spine that is um, still attached and what is going to be traditional once we cut through the meat, you actually turn and you just crank it up and it will open it and separate it so you don't have to cut with a bone saw. So we're underneath the leg and we're watching that we're not damaging the leg. You should catch the back end of the shoulder blade about an, you know, right off the edge or about an inch to an inch and a half. You can cut through that, that's fine, or you can, you can just seam around it. This is our first primal, so your front leg section, you know, the shoulder, 
and, and we're gonna break that down into um, the butt. The butt is at the top. And then the picnic with, with the leg bone is the second half. And it's gonna be an almost separated through the center. And then you have your shank, which can be left on or taken off. And then we have our hock or our trotter, which is your, your foot. You can't really mess up. I mean, ultimately you could turn the whole thing into sausage. So if you mess up that bad, you could, it could just all be sausage or pulled pork. So there's really not a whole lot of high pressure. So you can pretty much drop stuff in here. Forcing, forcing product doesn't help it go faster and actually seems like it, it makes it a, a worse grind. If it gets caught up, you use the plunger to help push it down there. But these first larger chunks, um, it goes through pretty nice. And then you want to store it. Uh, we're storing much of ours inside in the freezer, most of ours inside in the freezer. The bacon needs to cure for a week inside in the fridge before we cut it and then freeze it. Oh, now it's time to cook it. Now it's getting close to the glory. All right, so rendering lard, we, uh, we took the heavy fat and we put a little bit of water in the bottom so it wouldn't burn to even the cooking. Uh, we let it simmer and take the, um, take the uh, loose fat, the liquid fat as it warmed out, started to separate out. We poured that off after a few hours uh, from the, the thicker chunks of fat and any debris or little bits of meat and we strained it. Um, we had a little bit of water in the bottom of it so we put it into a different pot and we let it cook until you get a little bit of browning bits and all the bubbling of water comes out, you boiled it out. Um, if you have water in it, two things will happen. When you cook with it, it will pop and spatter like bacon grease. And if you store it at room temperature a long period of time, it can go rancid. So you need to have it clear of water. At that point, it could actually be stored in jars uh, at room temperature for a long period of time. We roasted, low roasted, 325. Uh, for about three hours. It's pretty much softened. Pulled them out again this morning and just for space we've thrown them on the barbecue even lower about 250 and we're just slow smoke roasting them to uh, bring them up to temperature and continue to tenderize them. Uh, this is going to give us a crispy skin like you do a whole roasted pig and the beauty of that is you're going to pull the roasted skin off of there and you're going to eat that as a crackling. We'll get through the fat and you're going to have those facial muscles and you basically extract them and eat them as a softened um, cooked item and uh, it's, it, it's the ears are on there, they're crispy, you can eat those. Uh, there's a lot of meat on there, a lot of fat to get around. It looks really scary and I understand that, but once you get through it, you may find it's actually a very amazing uh, little bit and it's cherished for what it is. Um, so we do have those, not for everybody, but I think a lot of people find they like it. We're, we're gonna look at the head cheese. So we had Two, um, two heads that were cooked for about three hours and it was tender until the meat started to fall off. Uh, all of the facial muscles were extracted and pulled off between the fat and the skin and the bone was all removed. We were left with this much meat. So when you don't use the head, look at what you left behind. These are all, it, it looks like roast beef. It looks like short rib. It, it's not much different. The tongue is in here. That's a little denser. So the tongue's in there. The jowls are in there. Sometimes people put some hock meat in. So how much intestine do you need for this? Uh, I'd like to be between two and three feet. We're going to loop it and we need to be able to tie them down. So this is a standard tie. So you can see this glistening gelatin and that's just telling me, and you can, it smells like roast beef, even though it's pork, it smells between roast pork and roast beef. Mm -hmm. I don't want to break these chunks up greatly. And after cooking, what about tasting it? And what about tasting some of the more um, special parts, right? Some of the more world appreciated parts. How about let's respect the entire animal and eat as much of it as we can. And there's some heads at the table. So how do you eat the heads, Michael? Right, so what you do is you pull off the crispy skin and you eat it as a crackling, it's amazing. You kind of dig in for the meat, you know, the fat you push it aside, you dig in for all the cheeks and the facial muscles and you pull off those pieces and experience mostly the texture and the nice flavors. Um, so that's there. Um, 
the eyes and all that are out, so don't don't be afraid. There's nothing crazy in there. Uh, we have a little bit of poached blood sausage that's chilled here. It's soft, but it is, I just tried. It's very tasty. We have a little bit of Italian links that we're finishing off, and we'll probably slice just a touch of this slow cook rolled porchetta di testa, which is which is soft. Um, just a little bit of that. So those are kind of your more adventurous items. So that's it, that's a brief overview of the 10 steps it takes to take a live pig and then put it in your belly. Those are the 10 steps. If, again, if you want to see the actual kill and learn that for yourself, the kill and bleed out, I made a special video just for you guys, it's free, it's down there. Hey, maybe you want the whole pig butchery masterclass. Well, that's gonna be available when it's done and probably within a couple of weeks, but only those who sign up for this free video are gonna get the invitation. It's not. I, I don't think I need to promote it later on or anything like that. So if you're wanting in on the whole master course, we're gonna include that for free with a premium annual membership purchase into our do-it-yourself abundance memory area. But it's only available to those who sign up for the free course. It's gonna be an invite only and email because our registration is closed right now. So get in on that. Check out the free video. It's there now. Go enjoy it.